Lots of different variables in this one. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for clicking on to my weather extra. We have the heavy snow, the strong wind, the blizzard conditions, the cold temperatures, the dangerous wind chills possible, and the coastal flooding all in one storm system that's inching its way to the north tonight. Let's take a look at satellite radar to start us out. Notice some of those heavy bands of snow already moving into southeastern Massachusetts, the Cape and the Islands. Those will shift off to the north during the overnight. I think our heaviest snowfall will be between the hours of 2 a.m. and 2 p.m. So Looks like we're going to see some uh, pretty nasty conditions tomorrow morning when you factor in the heavy snow and the strong gusty winds. All right, Doppler HD right now, I'm recording this just before 8 o'clock, indicates some light snow down to southern York County. And it's been snowing for most of the afternoon down in the Portsmouth area. In fact, let's head down there looking out over towards the Memorial Bridge. Uh, tides going down, of course. Notice there's a little bit of snow in the docks right there. Not a lot. It's been light snow so far. All right, blizzard warnings have been hoisted by the Weather Service. They go into effect at 10 o'clock and extend all the way until 4 a.m., not tomorrow, but 4 a.m. Wednesday. So a pretty long duration event here. Winter storm warnings remain in effect in the areas in the pink. Uh, those are winter weather advisories farther off to the north and west right there. All right, so what does it take to get a blizzard warning? Well, this is the blizzard criteria. It's a very strict criteria. You know, a lot of folks think it uh, has to do with the amount of snow that falls. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the visibility uh, and the wind. So visibility must be reduced to a quarter mile or less due to falling or blowing snow. That's the first thing you need. You need wind sustained or frequent gusts to 35 miles per hour or greater. And you need those to happen for three hours or more. And it looks like that will happen, and that's why the Weather Service did hoist those blizzard warnings during the day yesterday. In addition to that, we have coastal flood warnings that go into effect at 2 a.m. Areas in green, we're watching the high tide at 420. That extends until, uh, that shouldn't say p.m., that should say 6 a.m., so 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, on Tuesday, we're watching the high tide at 420. All right, air temperatures are running in the teens. We also have uh, coastal flood advisories for mid-coast and down east. We're in the teens now, and it's going to be real interesting to see what happens with the temperatures during the morning tomorrow. I suspect with a stiff northerly wind, these temps are going to fall into the single digits with wind chills falling well below zero. Here are your projected wind gusts. This is run off of the RPN model, and it might be a little bit high, but you get the general idea. By 5 a.m., we're looking at winds gusting close to 40 miles per hour. Inland, uh, not quite as strong, but still a respectable wind gust. 10 a.m., we're looking at wind gusts probably a little over 40 miles per hour. Now it's Rockland, possibly gusting over 50 miles per hour. Again, it's a forecast model, so take it with a grain of salt here. Some inland towns gusting close to 40. The wind should start to release, release its grip on us by early Wednesday morning. Remember, we have that blizzard warning that remains in effect until uh, Wednesday at 4 a.m. All right, so our, our expected wind gusts, probably about 40 to 50 mile per hour wind gusts at the coastline. Uh, you head inland closer to 30 to 40, probably in the upper end of that. And you know what? I wouldn't be shocked to see Augusta, especially gusting over 40 miles per hour. They're a little higher up. They seem to always get uh, some pretty solid wind gusts there. And those wind gusts will drop off the farther away from the storm system you get there. Uh, wind chills, I think, will play an issue tomorrow. The Weather Service sent out a little memo earlier today saying they're considering a wind chill advisory. And I suspect by tomorrow we'll be dealing with a wind chill advisory. Current wind chills are around zero. I think they'll be falling well below zero by tomorrow morning with those air temps in the single numbers and winds gusting to 40 miles per hour. Here's what's happening with the storm right now. We're going to watch the storm intensify pretty quickly. You can see it. It is to the uh, off the mid-Atlantic states here, and it's going to be a very slow mover. The storm's going to track south of Nantucket, continue to intensify, and then it's going to wrap in a stiff north-to-northeasterly wind. It's that north-to-northeasterly wind that will be pulling in colder temperatures during the morning uh, with those uh, possibly dangerous wind chills. Um, and it's going to be quite gusty, no question about that, as the storm continues to strengthen. All right, Storm Tracker starts us at 2 o'clock in the morning. Notice some of the heavier bands of snow starting to move up into southern portions of Maine. I suspect our heaviest snowfall will be during the morning tomorrow. This is 8 o'clock in the morning. Note some of those darker shades of blue. Those indicate some of the heavier bands of snow. And even see that gray color right there? I don't think I've ever seen that on Storm Tracker. It's a forecast model, but I don't think I've ever seen that contour. I'm assuming it indicates some of the uh, heaviest bands. It would uh, uh, coincide with what we're expecting for uh, the timing of some of the heaviest bands anyway. Also take note of the temperatures. Temperatures will likely be in the single digits as colder air starts to filter in. Single digits and low teens anyway. So it's going to be cold, windy, and snowy. This is 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We're still dealing with some heavy bands of snow. And I think during the afternoon and evening, instead of heavy snow with snowfall rates of 1 to 2 inches per hour, we're probably looking at more light to moderate snow. So it's going to continue to snow. It should just start to lighten up as we head into tomorrow night. That's 11 o'clock 
on Tuesday night. And when I refer to heavy snow, I'm not talking about heavy, wet, pasty snow. I'm talking about uh, the intensity that's falling from the sky. I think it's going to be a, a fluffy snow and a windblown snow at that. It's <laughs> going to be an adventure to measure this stuff here. Uh, snow drifts, some parts of the house, on the south side of the house, probably three feet, and on the north side of the house, where it's scoured away from the wind. I wouldn't be shocked to see uh, six inches in spots. All right, Storm Tracker takes us into Wednesday. That's 8 o'clock in the morning. The snow is starting to wind down. The clouds will be slow to break on Wednesday, though. Uh, we should see some improvement Thursday before our next storm system moves in. All right, this is another forecast model. It's the European model, projected snowfall totals here. Notice the jackpot down in southern New England and into southern parts of New Hampshire and southern parts of Maine. Uh, we're seeing uh, those snowfall totals uh, lighten up a little bit uh, the farther north and east you go there. So uh, take that with a grain of salt as well because it's just one forecast model. Look at all that snow Later in the week, though, another storm system could bring another half foot of snow on Friday. All right, we'll deal with that when the time comes. As far as this storm goes, um, no major changes here. I think most towns get a 1 to 2 feet of snow out of this. I think a solid 18 to 24 will do it. From the Sebago Lake region, Casco Bay area, including Portland, down to Sanford, uh, all of York County, southern New Hampshire. Where it gets a little trickier, I think, will be... Areas like mid-coast, they'll be right on the border, at least the upper end of the 14 to 20. Lewis and Auburn up through Augusta, Waterville, 14 to 20 for you. There's some forecast model guidance suggesting that some of that 18 to 24 may hug mid-coast and into down east. I'm not completely sold on that. I still think the jackpot's going to be down here, but something to watch. Regardless, it's a lot of snow either way. Those snowfall totals will uh, diminish or taper off a little bit the farther north you go. But even up near the Canadian border, it's possible for another for 8 to 12 inches there, which is a respectable amount of snow. All right, seven-day forecast. This is going to be a 10-day stretch to remember. Blizzard tomorrow. Wednesday, the snow ends early. Uh, this, the clouds will be hard to break. It might get a few sunny breaks late, but we wouldn't count on many. Thursday, we'll see some sun return. Another storm is possible Friday. Not as strong, though. That should end early Saturday morning. Uh, another storm will form early next week on Monday. There's some forecast model guidance suggesting we're going to get another snowstorm out of it. Other forecast model guidance suggesting it's going to be a little bit farther off to the south. I'm hedging more towards uh, that storm is going to stay to our south. But certainly another one to watch. Your inland forecast, not much of a change there. So tomorrow's going to be a busy day, no question about that. We'll have more updates coming up on Fox 23 at 10, CBS 13 at 11, and we plan on having live coverage pretty much all day tomorrow. We'll at least during the morning and during the afternoon, we'll have, uh, we'll have more updates right through the uh, late night hours on your uh, Tuesday. So that's the way things look tonight. Stay tuned for more updates. Have a nice night.